What's up, everybody? Troy Cartwright here. Welcome back to Ten Year Town. Before we get started, a couple housekeeping items. We have doubled our YouTube subscribers over the last two weeks. Um, we're trying to double it again over the next two. So if you can go to tenuretown.com, click on YouTube and subscribe, it helps us out a ton. Thanks. Today's guest is songwriter, artist, entrepreneur, former professional golfer, Colt Ford. You know Colt from a song he wrote called Dirt Road Anthem, which was one of the biggest songs of the 2010s. And from his own artist project, he has such a unique story. It's a story unlike any other we've ever had on the pod. I know you're going to learn a lot. So without further ado, here he is, Colt Ford. I didn't put out my first record till I, well, my first record is Colt Ford till I was 37. Man. So I, I, everything about me was backwards. I mean, like it was all wrong. It was um, all wrong. <laughs> well, uh, I always start this thing off with with the same question, which is, how long have you been in town? Since uh, like the end of 06, 2006. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. However long that is. I don't know. I don't want to okay, 18 I years, 18, I think. 18, 20, something like that. That's crazy. It's getting close. Where where, where from? Where'd you move from? I'm from uh, right outside right Athens, Georgia. Yeah, okay. Grew up there. Uh, did you live there after? I did. I never officially moved to Nashville. I had a place, I've always had a place here. But yeah. uh, at the time, my kids were younger uh, and, and she didn't, my ex wife didn't really want to move then. And plus she had, and she had help. Her parents were there, my parents were there. So yeah. she had help with the kids. And I knew what, what, I was chasing was going to take so she was going to need the help you know yeah. what i mean so and coming here not having any help so it worked out i meant at that time were you was this because uh, i know you kind of had um, basically two full careers yeah. were you chasing golf at this time or were you chasing uh, no, music so <laughs> i mean it's wild i mean i my entire life if you ask anybody i grew up with they what what my deal was i said well i'm gonna make music and play professional golf since yeah. i was probably 10 years old i said wow. that now, I realize how lucky I am that that happened. I mean, <laughs> the, the the golf stuff, and people always ask, like, why? Did, music is really my first love. Yeah. I was a, I don't look like it, in it, especially when I first came to town. I certainly didn't look like an athlete, although <laughs> underneath there was one. I had baseball and golf scholarships. I was yeah. a high school, a junior All-American, a college All-American, and I played the tour for 10 years. And people were like, well, why didn't you do music? Because I was trying to do both. Yeah. It, it, growing, growing up, I was doing, you know, I was doing both. And then I, when I turned pro in golf, I was trying to do both in. And the schedules do not match up. I mean, I go to bed now for music when it's time to get up for golf, yeah. if you're doing that for a living. So the schedules don't work at all. I'll talk to some of my buddies that still play, you know, Phil Mickelson and guys that I grew up with. I might talk to them at five in the morning. They're, I know they're getting up, getting ready to wow. go to work, and I'm getting ready to go to bed. Yeah. So uh, it, it's an interesting dynamic, and people are like, well, why didn't you do music instead of golf? But music is so – there's so much luck mm -hmm. involved in it. Mm -hmm. golf is there luck sure but like it's it's a lot of it is self-created luck like nobody could stop me if i was good enough like I mean, you couldn't stop and me from making a living right at golf yeah. music we you, you do it we all do i mean like i've i've played shows and i've seen guys open for me i'm like oh my god this dude's the best you're the best thing i've ever heard right and you'll go back to that bar play there three years or four years from now and he'll still be right there whether the right person didn't hear him or he couldn't chase it or, you, yeah. know, you know how it goes, or somebody offers you a deal and then they got fired next week and the new, new guy doesn't want, doesn't want, he wants to bring in his own artist. I mean, it's all weird. There was just so much luck involved in that. Uh, yeah. That I chose golf at the time, but I could never, people were like, how did you put out a record at that age? Like, yeah. I'm like, I could never turn, music never went away from me. I could, I tried to, I literally tried to make it go away because I'm like, you know, you're out of your mind chasing this dream in your mid thirties, like with yeah. a wife and two kids. And, a, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I just could never make it go away. Music never goes, I can never turn it off. So how, how did it end up that you got kind of like, I don't know, a break in the music business? Uh, you know, I've tried, I've, I made a record in Athens, Georgia in 1983 wow. when I was a freshman in high school, a rap record. 
I'd never even seen a white kid rap ever. I never, that, that's pre Beastie Boys. Yeah. So I'd never even seen that before. Uh, and in Athens, you know, obviously was in my era. I'm 54, so Athens was on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine in the 80s. It was the place. I meant like, yeah. I saw, I saw REM with Blues Travelers direct support and Dave Matthews opening for six dollars. Like you couldn't see that show for a thousand dollars today. Yeah. Uh, so I just, you know, I, I grew up. I was just a weird kid, man. I, I, music and certainly the rap stuff was not a, I mean, that just wasn't normal. I meant for yeah. a, a white kid that, a white country kid that yeah. I, I just could do it. And I always would tell people, they were like, well, how? And I was like, well, you know, like the guy that wrote, you know, the Terminator never really saw a metal robot guy. He just thought, you know, he just did that. Yeah. And so I, I don't know. I just, and I was just so living in my own world and, Growing up there in that time, I meant trying to do that. Like that, what I, I there, there was a lot of hated on towards me. Like, what are you doing? You know, I mean, yeah. like it was it was weird. I mean, and then and then I'm also one of the top junior golfers in the world. Like, not in my town, in the world. Like, major college scholar. Like, yeah. And so there was a little bit of like, why well, is my real name is Jason? Like, I pull up to Athens Country Club with earrings in my ears, bumping <laughs> Run DMC, and then going out and shooting 65. Like, there was a lot of, like, what is wrong with this kid? Yeah. But I just was – my parents, they never had anything. My dad didn't have indoor plumbing until he was 18. I meant, like, you know, just poor. And But they never they never stifled me from doing anything. Like, yeah. even – like, they didn't know anything about what I – I meant, like, a white kid like, listening to Run DMC in 84. They didn't know what the hell that was. Yeah. I, I was just doing, I just did my thing and I just never, I just kind of didn't pay attention to the noise around me of like, what are you doing and why are you doing that? And yeah, it's like, just I don't, I don't know, liked. I was just doing what, what I like to do. And I, 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 I kind of still do that really. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, but at the same time I had, I had to make, a, you got to make a living, you got to, you know, you get, and so I chose golf. I knew I could make a living at that. And I, I did for a while and had some injuries and. That was just when Tiger was Woods was just coming out there, so the money w was not the same. I mean, it, the pur gotcha. purses increased a hundred percent when he came out there. Like, yeah, that's not a little bit. That's you that's know, that's double. like somebody going, "Oh, you make fifty cents a record. Now you're making five dollars a record." You'd be like, "Holy shit, really?" Yeah. I mean, like that. And at the time, I was just kind of in between. I didn't know what to do. My dad was just a little old used car dealer there in Georgia, Athens. I I could sell cars. I knew how to do that. That's just talking. Uh, but I just could not make music go away. I just, and so I was constantly writing and I was constantly, like a lot of people do, that you, you chase things, you're like, oh, that's working, I'll try. This town does it a lot, actually. Yeah. You know, they'll see like, oh, let's chase, this is working, oh, Morgan's working, let's all make songs that sound like Morgan. It's like, it's more than just that though. you like, I can't, it may be Morgan. You know, people don't want to admit that sometimes. They think, well, it's it's just these songs. It's like, no, that doesn't mean that it's a hit for everybody. No. It means it's a hit for him. Like, mm -hmm. I see a lot of people that try to do what I do, but they ain't me. I mean, like, yeah. they're not bad, but I mean, they ain't me. Yeah. And and that's also flattering that, you know, you, you chase something like that. But so I, I chased a lot of different things, and I just could never cut it off. And my ex-wife at the time, uh, she wasn't the ex at the time. She said, well, why don't you, I, I, I was doing something with the PBR, professional bull riders. I was, okay. I was actually the CEO, Randy Bernard, who's actually now Garth's manager, uh, was the CEO of the PBR at the time. Okay. And I, I was, I was entertaining going, I loved bull riding. I fooled around with rodeo and been around it my whole life. And my, my, my ex Jessica loved bull riding. So we would go to the to PBRs and I met some people and then they started having me like, well, go play golf with the CEO of Wrangler or our sponsor. And I could, I'm, it's, I like doing that. Like some, yeah. you know, most artists, a lot of artists are uncomfortable. They're great to watch live, but sometimes they're uncomfortable in social. We've all seen artists oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, you're yeah. like, wow, you're so weird. Except when you're on stage, you're like a superstar and you're off stage, you're super like awkward. And I like that. I like the off stage. Like yeah, I, I think, like meeting people and talking to people. I think people would be surprised 
how and a lot of artists how a lot of their favorite artists are oh 100 you know, behind the scenes yeah if you or, decide you if, you if i just said i was about to write a tell-all book i just my phone would blow up yeah be a lot of people <laughs> like no wait a second what stories are you about to tell yeah and most of those guys i couldn't tell because they could probably tell one on me so i don't think any <laughs> books would be written i don't think i'll be doing that anytime soon but yeah uh, yeah man so i just I, I started she goes well do something this kind of country, like who you are, like all the hip hop rap stuff I'd done. I mean, I worked with Jermaine Dupree. Jermaine was a kid. I was like 21, Jermaine 17. We did the whole crisscross record together. Like yeah. we created that all. Jermaine is just an absolute genius, you know? Wow. And and we didn't know what we were doing. We were just making music. We didn't know crisscross was going to sell 15, 20 million records and go yeah. on tour Michael Jackson. I mean, Jermaine is easily one of the greatest producers, maybe in my mind, the best of all of them, because he can do, all the other ones can do pieces of it. Like they are like Timberland, I mean, Timberland, they have different, this guy, some guys play the keys, Timberland's pretty dope, but like Dre had Scott Storch and different, Jermaine yeah. can do all that shit himself. Like yeah. he can write the song, he can write a rap song, he can write a singing song, he can play multiple instruments, he can produce it, like he's just a genius. Yeah. And so uh, I, I was just I was just all over the board. I just love music, man. I couldn't, couldn't just never went away for me. And I just thought I'd, I I decided to come try this. I did that song for the PBR. I sent it to Randy Bernard, and he's like, "This shit is great. This is yeah. going to be our. We want to be the, our theme song. Where do we get? The, well, how can we get it? I was like, "Oh, you can get it." I was like, "Well, who is?" It? I was like, "It's me." He's like, two seconds phone ring. He's like. What the hell are you talking about? This is you. It's like <laughs> I was like, you you played golf, and then I was like, yeah, but also did me. I mean, I never told him that, and yeah. uh, and he's like, well, whatever it is, this is what we're doing. I mean, we're gonna make it, and that's kind of how Colt Ford began. I mean, wow. I I started being I was making kind of hip hop sounding records, but I was talking about the way I grew up, which was hunting, fishing, you know, yeah. country stuff. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is everybody's like, oh, my God, you invented a new genre. No, I didn't. Stop saying that. I meant know your history. I meant songs like Smoke, 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 That Cigarette and Hot Rod Lincoln. And yeah. What do you think The Devil Went Down to Georgia is? I meant I, I'm not saying it's a hip-hop song, but it's just words that rhyme and they're in a song. Like, I, Yeah. It's, it's just kind recitation of— Recitation records were around before the word rap was ever invented. So yeah. I was always dumbfounded when, the, you know, people on radio would go, well, what? I don't— I'm like, I don't, why are y'all so confused? Like, I remember asking Bobby Braddock, like, because he wrote, you know, uh, Toby's song, who's God bless, we lost him. He's one of my best friends. Uh, but, you know, want to talk about me. You talk about your friends, you talk about, I mean, I'm like, what, what do you think that is? I mean, like, that's what I do. Yeah. But nobody, when I first came, I mean, I was also, although I'm super good looking, as you guys can tell, but I mean, I was a 320 pound guy in a cowboy hat at 37 or eight years old. They were like, what the, f you know, yeah, know what, what do we language, do with this guy? I don't know what our language deal is. I, it's there. fine. It was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? I mean, yeah. it was like, and then we came to town and people were like, we love this. We have no idea what to do with this. Yeah. And so it was, you know, and I think Jelly said it. He's like, you know, I think Cole, I was probably 10 years ahead of where we are now. Yeah. But and sometimes that's very frustrating for me mm -hmm. because I, although almost five million records sold and uh, all I've done, I've never had a song in the top forty. I've written song, but myself, I've yeah. I've got multiple platinum singles, multiple platinum records, multiple gold records, but I've never had a song in the top forty on on the chart on the country chart. Never. Wow. Crazy, and even my artist friends that know me, that have known me from the beginning, they're like, "Well, what about you know?" I'm at uh, Chicken and Biscuits. I'm like, "No, nope, never." Driving wow. around song with Al Dean. Nope, never. Wow, and, and it's never and, and those are like double platinum records, that, yeah. which has really never really been done much until I, you know, before I came along. And now there's some crazy stuff on the internet now that's happening. Yeah, you know that where it's like artists that's kind of more honestly um, become more uh, almost. Not not common now, but it's, but it's more it's, normal. Like it's it's. I don't want to say it's easier because I don't think it's easier. But I don't know it's, if that's the answer, question, right answer. Yeah, easier, but it's just it's. it's there's more, it's more options. possible. It's more possible yeah. because of fifteen years ago, twenty years ago. That no, you you have to come here. You have to sign a deal. You yeah. have to go through the process. I meant like it's just different now. So when you moved here. What did that look like? You did this thing with the PBR. Yeah. And then and like, it, what and did that? Kinda started, that's kind of how we broke the whole, we kind of did a Where's Waldo thing. And we, in 2007, I think 2007, 
PBR was doing their first, the beginning of the year at Madison Square Garden. Never been, never had bull riding there in New York City and all yeah. that. And that was where the 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 world finals before in Vegas. We were we had started advertising with kind of a where's Waldo thing. Like it was who is Colt Ford because nobody knew. Yeah, me who I nobody knew any of that, and and we were advertising at the World Finals, and pe these people like who was Colt Ford, and you know, did you have a um, team helping you do this? Were you like, were you like staring at the ceiling and so, not going, how do I advertise this? So like, my, what was my the... best friend for thirty plus years, Shannon Houchins, uh Shannon and I, and the CEO of Zaxby's, who founded Zaxby's, yeah. is a friend of mine I grew up with. When I when I did the PBR song, we, we I remember. Doing the song, Shannon at the time, he sold 40 million records as a producer. He worked with Jermaine. He's produced Usher and TLC, all this stuff. He still had a studio in Atlanta. And I went over there one day, and this is I was I was teaching golf at the time. I was teaching other tour pros, and I was like, man, I'm gonna do this song. I was like, I'm gonna just find one of your tracks through. And he was like, whatever. He was doing something else at the yeah. and I, and he comes in there a little while. He's like, what are you doing? I mean, he's like, what is this? This sound? I mean, like it it sounded something like nothing you know, we really had ever heard. He, yeah. he, and there's certainly nothing he had ever heard me do. And he's like, this is really kind of cool because Bubba Sparks, we kind of, we 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 named him, we named Andy Bubba Sparks. We got him his record deal. Him oh, and I wow. used to be in a group together, a duo together. No way. And then he went off and did his thing. And I, I and it was just like, okay, well, he had his chance. He did his thing. And I wasn't a part of that. And I was still doing my deal. And, uh, you know, we just Shannon was like, I, I don't, I don't know what this, this is cool though. It sounds cool. He's like, and Shannon just ran multiple record labels. He knew how to run a record label, but we knew we'd need money. Yeah. And we thought, well, let's go out to, uh, we'll go out to Cali and go meet with Warner Brothers. And all the, we know everybody there. And we go out there and it's like, hip hop office, rock office. This, uh, where's country? Oh, uh, that's Nashville. Well, who runs that? We don't know. And we were like, what? and and er and we knew everybody at all these labels in New York, all the big labels. Yeah. But it was all here, and neither one of us knew anybody like here. And we were like, oh shit, this might be harder than we thought. Yeah. And it was like we came, we started talking, we started recording some songs. We didn't know what we were doing. When I made Ride Through the Country. I was just, I wrote Ride Through the Country in a week, the whole mm -hmm. record. I wrote the whole record. But we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah. I was just right, which was great because I was it was way more honest when I didn't know what was going on and I'd yeah, not seen behind the curtain. There's a beauty. Um, there's a beauty in not knowing. And sometimes there's stuff I, I'm like, damn, I wish I didn't know that. I mean, you know, or I wish I didn't. Uh, it's, I there, wish I hadn't peeked behind the curtain to a, a certain extent. There's actually a lot of work in um, even writing songs, especially right. of, of like trying to go back to how it was when you started when you didn't know anything and you forget you weren't trying to be clever you were just being honest because I came honest. to town with this record and we're like and people are hearing it and they're like but everybody's like this is incredible like, even major labels I mean you know Renee Bell when she was running something, all these people were like this is awesome we have no idea what to do like they just didn't know what it was and they didn't yeah. they're looking at me going I, I don't know I mean you know I, they just didn't understand it and we were like well I guess we're gonna have to do it ourselves. And so Shannon and I went to my friend Zach, the CEO, and was like, "We're just we're just gonna do it ourselves. We'll start a record label." He's like, "Well, how much, what do we need to do that?" Yeah. And we gave him a number, and he's like, "Okay." I mean, and that number for him is, yeah, you know, like smoking Chuck bass, change. chicken shit money, Daddy. <laughs> I mean, that was nothing to him. Yeah. But for us, it was like, well, we can't do it if we don't have that. Shannon knew how to run. The, he knew how to do the label. We knew and, how to do distribution and all that, and I and I was the artist, and was like, well, we got enough money to either it's a three year buddies trip and it doesn't work, or yeah, you know, or maybe it does. And what was what kind of things did you know? Did you like need the money for at the time? Was it radio promotion? Was it we didn't know what making, we, like, we did, manufacturing? Hell records? yeah, we didn't know. What, I mean, we knew all about that, but we didn't know we didn't know anything about how Nashville worked. We yeah. didn't know how radio we didn't know how any of that worked here mm -hmm. you know especially back then in the hip-hop game you walk in there and go hey greg street here's two grand play the record you know i mean like that's just what it was i mean the payola yeah. thing was a real thing yeah and apparently it, it and it is still across the board don't get don't get it twisted it's still sure. out there despite what they try to tell you i mean they just figure out a different way to do it it's like yeah. every other it's like every other thing but we didn't know, so we just started coming to Nashville. I think we paid for that renovation of that Hampton Inn down there in West in West End. I mean, like, 
we just started coming to Nashville for weeks at a time. We didn't know anybody. And yeah. we just started going just around. Just figuring it out. We just started going to Tin Roof and meeting people. And and luckily I met I I, I knew through some uh, through some acquaintances, a few people, and it just here we are all these years later. And honestly, probably I don't know. I'd be interested to see. We probably I think we have the most successful independent record label of all time here in Nashville. Wow. Because there's other record labels that, that say they're independent. But they have some sort of affiliation with a major, whether it be distribution, mm -hmm. publishing, or something. Yeah. We have none. Yeah, we have all direct deals with iTunes with everybody. We have we manufactured ourselves, we recorded ourselves, we did all of it ourselves. Wow! And so it's wild that we're you know that here we are still doing it all these years later. Yeah. I'm fifty four and just started my tenth record and Dang. and I'm super jacked about this new one. That's awesome. It's wild, man. It's, I love it's it. Just, Music is just, it has a way of transcending politics and religion and all that. And It's magic, man. Again, like I said, I was just too hard-headed and stupid. to. If people would hear it. I just knew when I started recording some of these songs and I was playing them for people and they were like, I don't know what this shit is, but I I, I like it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's like the regular, I don't know what it is, but I love it. I mean, it was like, that was kind of the feedback we were getting. And then it was like, okay, well, how do we... how do we let everybody else love it? Like, how do we get it, you know, and we just started having to figure it out. Yeah. And I don't know if we'd have figured it all out, but we figured some of it you out. We figured some of yeah. it out for sure. Yeah. Well, how did, um, let's kind of go, I don't know, along, let's go find some, some high watermarks along the way. All right. You had, I guess your first number one as a writer was chilling on a, was that dirt road it? anthem. Dirt road anthem. Yeah. I, I, in and my mind, always it's, say chilling in on my dirt mind road it's chilling on a dirt road. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at it, uh, you know, I was doing doing a lot of research, so I guess you cut it. Yeah, it's my and song. Then, Dirt Road Anthem is my song. Yeah, and then it was on my for me and Brantley. I mean, Brantley yeah. sang the hook, and at the time, we sat down to write that song. I, I tell you that funny story about that song. One of my dear friends and became one of Brantley's dear friends was a guy named Mike Deacle from Athens. Mike Mike wrote Scarlet Fever for Kenny Rogers. I mean, he's oh, had wow. multiple hit songs, uh, but it was State Farm Insurance agent but he kind of mentored Brantley and I was writing and the day that we wrote Dirt Road Anthem I was picking up Brantley to go write with Mike and he goes man I got we were talking about my record and he's like I got an idea and we sat down and wrote Dirt Road Anthem in 30 minutes and wow. then went to write with Mike and wrote for six hours and I don't even know what we wrote <laughs> I don't remember what that was or what that song and we didn't when we wrote it we didn't know that anybody would give a shit but I mean both of us were still trying to make it yeah I mean he was truly out. a kid then and I was you know, I'm in my 30s, Brantley's, you know, early 20s. Wow. And it, we didn't know. We just wrote the song because we, we thought it was what we liked. Yeah. We didn't know. I mean, and, and you know, uh, I'd already, it had already become an underground. I remember I was playing with Jason uh, in Florence, South Carolina. Uh, his booking agent at the time, Kevin Neal, who's one of the all time greats here in Nashville. Yep. His son, Austin, has become. Crushing Becoming it. an absolute stud, and Kevin Kevin was my booking agent, so I was playing some shows with Jason, and uh, we were playing Florence at the arena, and I remember when Jason and I were sitting out back, he's like, it's so wild to hear 10,000 people sing a song that's never been on the radio in Dirt Road Anthem, and and they they do, they were. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and it, it's surreal, like, you go, and he's like, that's just crazy. And Michael Knox was like, Jason, you need to cut this song. And, uh, you know, Jason at first was like, you know, I don't know. And, and I get that. I mean, like, yeah. he was just starting to like, that was right on the, that was right on the cusp of, that was right when Big Green Tractor and she's kind of like, it was, you could see like, okay, you knew he was, you knew he was good, but like, like he was just fixing to launch into A-list, yeah, like yeah, superstar yeah. status. And, um, you know, funny enough, in our, fa when, when we first even started talking about it, our, mine and Brantley's fans went, fucking crazy they were so like he's stealing a song and oh, I'm like, wow. no he's not i mean first of all when he recorded it i was i was starting my third album so i wasn't going to go back to dirt Red yeah. anthem i meant and so i'm tickled to death he cut it it's almost it's almost a 10 million it's almost a diamond single or yeah probably will be by the end of this year and there's not a whole lot of those so i mean it was but and michael knox really pushed him to do it he's like let's and and honestly, and he'll tell you. And I mean, that that, that song took him from hit, that song went to the stratosphere. Like it was yeah. like, oh God, you're he's the guy. At yeah. that, and uh, but he almost didn't do it. I remember he called me when they were in the studio. He's like, I can't do this shit. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do it? 
He's like, I can't say it like you. I was like, well, say it like you. Don't don't say it like me. Yeah. Say it like just say the words just like any other song. But 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 because it was so different and the cadence and all that, like I I delivered a different way. And I was like, just do it. Just say it the way you would say it if you. And he called me back. He's like, got it. And obviously that became a pretty big deal. Yeah. A pretty big song. Did you know it was gonna be? a number one hit right away. Were you watching it or was this no, just another it, thing it, that was going for on? For me at the time, honestly, I mean, I just never, I never pay, I know, and I know a lot of my writer friends and a lot of them do and they watch charts. I, first of all, I never had one on there so it wasn't no reason for me to watch <laughs> that shit anyway. Uh, but I just never did because I figured like, man, I got enough going. Like I can't, con there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. So I just never paid any attention to it ever. But I, I do know they they were doing a tour. Jason and Eric were both blowing up at the time so i think oh nine may have been they did this little tour together uh and they were both like you could see like both there was jason eric luke they were all like okay these dudes these are about these to be are the next these guys. are about to be the, the dudes like yeah. they're, they're about to be you know garth and toby and these guys i mean they're about to be those guys and uh odd enough so eric called me one night he was like i want you to know jason just played the song i forgot at whatever arena he's like Craziest shit I've ever seen. Really? Everybody sang it. This song's never been on the radio. And he goes, I told him straight up, you're an effing idiot if you yeah. don't make put that as, out as a single. <laughs> wow. And at first, they started to make it the lead single <clears throat> off that record. And I was like, no, I don't think it's lead single because it's it's just, he had just, just she's country. And I like, it, it was like. It was a little and, different. And that was so different. It's like, I don't know. You know, I and, and luckily, I forgot, but I think. They did Brantley's song, uh, I, oh, was that number one off that record? Uh, My Kind of Party. Yeah. And they did that first, then they followed that with a Kelly Clarkson song. And then they came with Dirt Road. And it was like, yeah, it's a rap voice. He, he is he is absolutely killing everybody with this. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, it's been, wild, it's been a wild ride. Wow. Super cool that he cut it. And there, there's multiple versions. because So there's my original version with yep. me and Brantley and Brantley singing the hook. Then we did an ex another version where Brantley has a rap verse on it that we did on one of his records. Oh, cool. And then there's obviously the Jason version. Yeah. So it's it's cool. It's, it's, and it's cool that we're all from Georgia. Yeah. You know, it, it's cool. And we all grew up kind of the same way. So, like, there's some artists, and that wouldn't be any disrespect to them, just like, yeah, you didn't grow up doing the shit we did. I mean, like... That song is who we are. Yeah. And there's some people, like, no, and I love, like, there's some people you go, I love you, like, but that's not who you are. As our, like, I although you could have made it a hit, it wouldn't have been authentic. For Jason, like, authentic. yeah, he grew up making George Riding Dirt. I mean, he grew up doing the same shit we did. So yeah. it well, worked out all right. There's like a, um, you know, yeah, it's it's your story. We're all just trying to be authentic. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, you, and were, I, and I, you guys are being authentic to to your so lives. Yeah, yeah, but when we didn't know, like I said, I never knew. If you just said like of all the songs I've written, this will be the big one of the biggest songs in the history of country music, which it is for sure. Yeah, I'd have gone. You're nuts. crazy. Yeah, you're crazy. There's <laughs> no, not that one. I'm like, and I, and I don't consider myself a great songwriter. I mean, I, I think I'm a, a really good songwriter. I'm creative, and I'm. And this town is just full of so many geniuses. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing to sit down and the people that I've got to sit in the room with, whether it be Rhett and Dallas and Hayslip or Ira Dean or Jeffrey Steele. I mean, the guys I've got to sit in the room with. Yeah. Amazing. It's crazy. Yeah. But you got you got that hustle, man. You man, I just don't know how to. Yeah, I mean, like, and there's people that are like, you know, this ain't going. And all my, everybody I knew was like, you're out of your mind. Like, what are you doing? You're. You are this career. You're you got two kids. Like you're out of your mind. Yeah. I like I was part of a company that I'd started with a couple of friends of mine. They're like, when I told them I was one, they're like, well, we're, we're kicking you out of the company. I was like, all right, whatever. I, I just was so I was just so I was like, I don't know. I'm gonna music. I just couldn't make it go away. Yeah, I just you said you couldn't. I was too hard headed. My mom always told me I was hard headed, and I just wouldn't listen. I'm like, well, when I started record when the record came out, like right through the country, really came easily for me like I, I like the way i when i wrote it it was like oh like it just poured out yeah when i was being because everything else i'd written to that point not that i wasn't honest but it was like i was writing about i could write it but i didn't know i didn't know shit about i didn't grow up in the city i didn't know stuff yeah. shit about what i was talking about i meant other than watching it on tv you know what i mean yeah. like 
Uh, so I didn't know anything about it. I was like, I just wrote about what I knew about, and that's the way it turned out. And we again, we didn't know what we were doing. We we came to town. We we kind of made it the way a, a hip hop record would be made, and we didn't know. We trying to find fiddle players. This in 2007, trying to find fiddle players and steel players in Atlanta. Like <laughs> we don't even know who to call. I, I don't yeah. know who to call. I didn't know nobody. <laughs> So it's like, it was just wild. And we came up here to Nashville. Uh, Adrian Young, the drummer for No Doubt, is a good buddy of mine. Okay. And uh, Adrian goes, you know the band Lit? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, Jeremy Popoff's in Nashville now, writing a lot. And Jeremy's also one of my really close friends now. I almost had a cut on every record of mine. But I didn't, I didn't know. He goes, I'll set it up. I'll fly to Nashville. I'll introduce you to Jeremy. And he knows some people, that, and maybe he can introduce you. And Okay. So we, I mean, I literally was like, oh, cool. So Adrian flies to meet Jer Jeremy, and he goes, all right, we're going to write today. He said, have you ever heard of a guy named Jamie Johnson? I said, yeah, that Dollar record. Like, I, I love that record. Yeah. Back to Carolina is like one of my favorite songs of all time. And he goes, well, him and I are really good, are good buddies. I've told him about you, but that's the other thing. Like, I always hated the term country rap. Like, I was like, I always just said I'm a country artist. Like, mm -hmm. nobody said Charlie was a country rapper when he did Devil Went Down. You know, it's like, so I didn't like that. But people that didn't know, they that's all, they didn't know how to describe it. That's what they would say. Yeah. And so there's a lot of people, especially back then, that would instantly go, nah, get that away from, you know, country yeah, plus we don't rap like that. equals crap. I mean, you know, that was the same shit I've heard. Yeah. Whatever. It's like, all right. I mean, it is what it is. So he goes, well, he's coming over here, and I, I've, t I've told him about you. And he goes, nah. Jamie's a little different. I don't know if we're going to write a song. I don't know if y'all are going to fight. I don't know if he's just going to leave. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I mean, I've I've done all of those things before. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm down with any of those. I was just too dumb to know it. And, and Jamie ended up becoming one of my best friends. And wow. he's easily, that's the first person I've wrote a song with in Nashville, me, Jamie, and Jeremy Popoff. Wow. And he, even if you just put those three names together you go what the how do y'all even know each other y'all shouldn't even like each other yeah and and jamie is has been a such an influence in my life and quite honestly he's in my mind is as good as has ever walked the streets of this town yep. as far as i'm concerned from top to bottom writing and, and he's singing. a true I mean, and, and like he it ain't a word that's ever come out of his mouth that he didn't mean yeah he's a true original you know Man, and I, mean, I and i love he you know, I, I've never met him, but I he, I, he's I can tell that he um, there's like a purity in what he. Yeah, it's he, honest with him too. Yeah. It's it's honest to a fault, mm -hmm. not re not really, but like him getting in the Opry. I had just had uh, hernia surgery last year, and I I live in Tulsa now, and my doctors and I, and Jamie's getting in the o Opry like three days after the and the doctors like you, I was like, yeah oh, okay, and my fiance Megan's like you can't. I'm like. Yeah, okay. I'm going to Nashville. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm gonna figure I'm it out. I'm driving to Nashville and I'm gonna watch Jamie get in the Opry because I don't know anybody that deserves it more. And I don't know anybody that it means like I, I'm not saying it doesn't mean stuff to other people, don't get me wrong. But like it had nothing to do with like the cool factor or anything. That's not what it was about for him. It's yeah. the honesty and the purity of the music and the art. And he's been one of my closest friends since from day one. Wow. And and like we play shows together all the time. People are like, how's that work? I'm like, well, I open. It's like I take you way up here in a roller coaster and light your hair on fire. I'm like, it's like doing Coke. And then Jamie will sit you back down. It's like doing Valium and you have the great <laughs> night. You calm back down. He sings these amazing songs. Yeah. Nobody sounds like him. And you go home and go, that was a heck of a night. I had I went way up here and now and then down. you go home and that's awesome. Yeah, so it, it's it's been interesting. Well, um, I saw it actually showed up on my TikTok, believe it or not, but you Damn had a, a really moving, I guess, you were talking about your friend Toby Keith. Uh -huh. And um is I guess, you know, what what's if if you're comfortable talking about it, like what's something about Toby, that you wish like people knew that that don't know him, hmm. just as a just as a I'll human. I'll try not to cry. I'm, I know people, and it's funny because people, I'm like, y'all could never let me win an award because I would I would be the worst up there. Like they'd be trying to rake me off stage. I'd be crying, thinking <laughs> mom and daddy and everybody because I, I they you know everybody's like, oh, Colt, the big redneck, tough deal. I'm like, yeah. well, I'm a 
pretty emotional dude. Yeah. And music makes me emotional as shit. Like I just can't. Even my fiance now be like, how are you just talking about the song and like your voice start? I'm like, I don't know. It just does it that. It does that to me. Like yeah. like nothing else. I mean, relationships and music just do that to me like nothing else. And yeah. Toby was. I tell people all the time, I'm like, he in the last 10 years, as a as an artist, I I because Toby, you know, he didn't he lives in Moore, Oklahoma. Uh I was for the last 10 years, I've probably been his closest friend as a that's an artist, artist. You know, yeah. I mean he's got a lot of guys that he, that he's, you know, writes with and guys that he's cool that he's pretty cool with. But Toby's he's just larger than life though, dude. Like yeah. I, I was at the you know the family the private funeral and I was super t I, I did a song with Crystal his daughter mm. you should go we 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 redid well the Seeger song we've got tonight but I redid the Kenny Rogers Sheena Easton version of it with her and like people don't even believe us me they're like we didn't know you could sing like that I'm like well yeah. I, I I was always scared to sing I mean and I've done a lot now but like I was just tight with that family that I was fam they were family to me and I was family to them I'm yeah. family to them and. There was times when I'd look at him and just be like, he still was larger than life, even though he's my buddy. Like we did everything together. We've been on vacation. We've done every we've done all kinds of shit together. Like yeah. real, real life stuff, family yeah. stuff. Real but like I would look at him sometimes and just feel like feel like a little kid. Hmm. Plus he was, you know, he's just big, he's a big guy and but he was just larger than life. And he was he did so much that people have no idea about. Yeah. Like we all do St. Jude and, and, and give and all that stuff, but like Toby's OK Corral in Oklahoma City is like 20, 30 room private hospital that's exactly like St. Jude's. Wow. That he puts about 20 mil out of his pocket hmm. to run. Like there's a lot of guys doing stuff. You ain't doing that. Yeah. Like, and he did, he never did any of that so somebody so he could cheerlead. He never said that to any I'm saying that he would never say that. Yeah. But like out of his pocket. Yeah. Like I know people go out and raise money and I'm like, but they they you ain't stroking a 20 mil check out of your pocket. <laughs> now, first of all, very few can stroke that check. Yeah. But second of all, like, do you know what that I mean, like what that is? Like, and he goes in there. I went with him one day over there. Just me and him. We was we was we were writing over at his house. We were writing, and he's like, oh, "I gotta go down to the hospital. And let's go down and visit some of these kids." And I mean, I'm talking about there's kids in quarantine. I mean, like he has all these parents pay for nothing. Yeah, it is like it is like the Ritz Carlton. I mean, it is private room if you need hyperbaric. I mean, like whatever you need yeah. is there. People, food, everything's provided for 24 hours a day, and and. They have, we'd go in there and he'd sign, they had all kinds of stuff, 500 guitars that, that he'd sign. He paid for all the shit himself, man. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. And and we were walking out and I, I'm just sitting there like a little kid. I'm just watching. We're walking around, talking to these kids, which I, I love doing that too. Anytime you can, I'm constantly Walter Reed and soldiers, you know, stuff like that. And uh, this good guy came running out of the, <clears throat> came running out of the place. We were leaving. We were getting in the truck. Mr. Key, Mr. Key, another big guy. But you look at this guy and you go, tough life, hard, hard yeah. life, like oil rig, field, hard, hard life. Yeah. Not money. Hard, hard, you could tell, hard living, hard life. Just, you, you knew that'd be it'd, like if you saw this guy in a bar, you'd be like, give this guy a wide berth. Don't yeah. mess with this dude. And this dude just broke down crying. Like if it wasn't for you, my son, and then at that moment you're like, "Wow, that's this is a big deal." Yeah, big deal. Wow. And for a guy like that to, excuse me, I don't mean, it, but uh, to just be that emotional, and to another man and be that humble and that grateful, it's just like, "Wow, that's moving, man." I'd like to be able to do something like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's a that's a um. That's a legacy to live, you know. He's a legend, like for real. Yeah, like there's a lot of people that like do some legendary shit. I've done some <laughs> legendary shit. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think I'm a legend. <laughs> Although some of these young kids say that, and I'm like, y'all just make me feel old. But he really was, and he didn't. It's so funny because I, you know, you and I had to get off the internet for a little bit because there's you see the hatred out there too, and I'm like. Y'all gonna get me a case. Y'all gonna get me caught a case up here. Like, <laughs> you start seeing this shit on there, and I, ah, he was a racist, and I'm like, 
His best friend was Wayman Tisdale that played in the NBA for years. Toby wrote a song about him. Wayman's a black guy that played. There was a phenomenal bass player that played it upside down and left-handed. Yeah. Toby wrote a song, and he played in the NBA for years. College All-American, like, you racist. Like, are you crazy? And you see that, and it's just like, and then people going, oh, yeah. And he, he charged soldiers for autograph. I'm like, what is wrong no, with that's you? That's crazy, yeah. He did over 250 shows overseas. Wow. You take the next five artists. I, I don't know this 100%. I'm just betting without even knowing. Yeah. Next five artists that have played two shows overseas. I'm talking, I don't mean overseas in like London at a nice base. I'm talking about Afghanistan, Iraq. I'm talking about 100 yards for where Saddam Hussein is in prison at. I'm talking about in the shit where yeah. wearing a vest every day. Like, wow. I, I love, don't get me wrong, and I'm not saying he did it to be, t I'm just saying he he did it. Yeah. And, and then you hear somebody say, it's like, what do you, you take the next five guys and add all up their time together. They ain't done 250 shows. Yeah. Like, in the time and the commitment that that takes, not to mention, it's dangerous. Like, he wasn't in, he was not, he was in, like, hot zones. Like, you got to be careful. Yeah. And he, he just... The dude is a legend, bro. Man. And then, then there's people, ah, he, he's a Trump supporter. I'm like, Toby never gave a shit about politics. Hmm. That's one thing I think people would not know. Toby did play for Trump, also played for Obama twice, also played for Clinton twice. Toby was a libertarian. He was not, he was not a Republican or a Democrat. Toby yeah. was a libertarian. So I think that's something that most people wouldn't know. Toby was about truth and freedom, America and these soldiers. Yeah. He didn't give a shit about politics. Man. He'd have been a great president because he would have just based it all off common sense. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. But that I would think those are some things that people don't don't know. Wow. Like, and he was just he was just that guy, man. He was just yeah. that dude. And when he got on stage, I mean, like, I don't care who's had in the room. When he got up there, he was the he was the ring leader. Yeah. I mean, he just really was. I've seen it. Like, we're at Pebble Beach playing the AT&T golf tournament, and they have a house band and we play for the volunteers because there's thousands of them and we jump up there and i think and and every artist jumps up and plays a couple you know jake goes out and plays and yeah. and, and charles kelly plays darius a lot of us go and uh and then and then it kind of but it can this jam session and so this band's like a 12-piece band i meant like full-on horn section like they're badass they yeah. play anything and one i meant so i'm up there on stage and I, you know, you just kind of look around. I'm like, like, Berto Sandoval's playing horn, like best trumpet player in the world. Yeah. Clint Eastwood's playing piano. Uh, Andy Garcia, the actor, is playing bongos. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And why, is, why am I on this stage? And Toby is just like, ringling. I mean, and giving every everybody a pass, take a solo, and he's just like. Follow me, boys, and oh, try to keep awesome. up. I mean, it's just we're doing Kansas City and just going through all kinds. I mean, it's – I bet he knew 5,000 songs. Yeah. I never – I mean, I know a lot of people that you give them acoustic guitar, and there's some guys you're just like – guys like Jamie or Randy Howes or Jake. Give them a, just an acoustic and tell them that they can play. Like, nobody's not anywhere even remotely close to what Toby Keith could wow. do. And he didn't just know the song. He'd tell you who wrote it. He'd tell you who played on it. Because when we were on tour, I got where I'd try to think of, like, I'm trying to think of some try to goofy him. shit that he, and he'd go, oh, uh, 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 no, that's a so-and-so. And, oh, wait, it goes like this. And I'm like, why, why do you know that? Unbelievable. Wow. And he was just, you know, and I don't know how many number ones. I think it's over 30. But, like, I want to say, like, 20 of them he wrote all by himself. Yeah. Like, that's how you get to 500 mil. It's a legend, man. That's how you get to 500 mil. There's a lot of guys got money. That are rich artist friends of mine, not yeah. not 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 five hundred mil. <laughs> I yeah. mean, like he was just man, he's just the dude, bro. Like that's crazy. Shit, it's, it it breaks my heart. Like I and that the video you're talking about, yeah. like I I couldn't, I didn't even do it the next day because honestly, I knew what was going on, uh, and nobody, most certainly, most people didn't. Yeah, but I talked to him, and I live in Tulsa now, so I I talked to him. All the time. Yeah. Almost, not every day, but, and he was doing better for a while. And then he did the shows in Vegas and it was, 
I wish I, I had some show. I wish I could have been there because yeah. I, I. But he he just he man, he's just a he's just a dude, bro. Yeah, like there's a lot of people that a lot of people do, a lot of people do, but he's the, he's that guy. Like he's, yeah. he was that guy for real. Oh, like and and just and if you were if you were if you're in his circle, you're in. Yeah, no, he didn't he didn't suffer a fool. Mm. He didn't tolerate a lot of the bullshit that goes on in this town. Yeah, and that's why you know, like Toby was in the World Songwriter Hall of Fame before he's in the Nashville Songwriter Hall of Fame, mm. which. What does that tell you? Yeah. That's a that's a little strange to me, but well, that's um, whatever. Yeah, well, it is what it is. That's beautiful to hear you talk about. It. Yeah, so thank man, you, he, thank he, you for sharing. Luckily, um, I didn't cry, so that's good. No, yeah, not too bad. <laughs> you know, this podcast, I guess, is just about trying to you know give give real advice and be real with with people that are getting started in this business. And yeah, part of it is trying to share people's stories so that somebody listening can hear, have the option to hear a bunch of people's different stories and understand that everybody's story is different. Yeah. And hopefully find some comfort in that because we're all, you know. We're all chasing it. We're and all I've chasing never looked, it. Like, I don't get the whole, you know, thinking, look, I write songs, you write songs. We both write songs. That's great. Like, it's, I don't. There's no competition. Some, yeah, like, I just never see it that way. And I yeah. I got some, I'm not, certainly not going to call names, but I, like, I hear some friends of mine and they're, they're, they're big songwriters and get pissy when, why does he, why did he get a got cut? I got, man, it's like, yeah. I just never saw it that way. I'm like, if you and I write together and you get a big cut for Morgan Wall and I'd go, awesome, bro, dinner's Sick. on you for <laughs> sure for a minute. Yeah. And then I'd go, that's awesome because we write songs together. So maybe me and you get a cut. Like yeah. I don't look at it and go, "That's bullshit." Why'd you get that? And I, I just don't see it that way. Yeah. Well, what's your um, if you could go back and and talk to your younger self, or just give a piece of advice to to somebody just getting started on started on their journey? What would you what What would you what piece of advice would you give them? I mean, one thing for sure is you got to be honest. Mm. And as a song, for me as a song, and I say this a lot, I say, I, say I, I write kind of reality songs. I write kind of, I was standing there and you said, hold my beer and watch it. I mean, I, or I did it or it happened to me or I saw it. Not that, the, and I call some, I call them like fantasy songs, other songs. And there's nothing wrong with it. Some of the greatest songs in the world are like that. Like yeah. that really wasn't what I, like who I was as an artist. But I would say be, if it's, be honest, especially if you're an artist yourself, like, because you're the one that's going to have to sell this shit. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, I, you, George, you don't want to hear, you don't want to see me trying to act like George Strait. And you don't want to see George Strait trying to act like Cole Ford either. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I think you get, but be honest, like, be honest, because I, I just think above all, before I tell people all the time, I was like, you can call me whatever, and I've been called a lot of them and still get called, but I'm like, but you can't say I wasn't original and I wasn't honest. That's beautiful. Uh, and so, and these young kids, I'm like, and you're going to get told no, bro. Like, I meant like, I still get it. I mean, you know, you ever have a girlfriend or wife, you're going to get told no. I mean, like, <laughs> it's just the way life is. I mean, like, I just, you just got to look at me. I'm, I mean, I'm the greatest example of how this works. I mean, if you ask Jelly right now, he'd go, yeah, Cole, somebody's got to run through the door. Yeah. Like, and Jelly, be first tell you, like a lot of the, like people he's doing songs with today, those, I know some of those people. And some of them people, wouldn't, they'd have been terrified if Jelly walked in the room and they were in the same room. <laughs> and like, ah, it's a live tiger. I mean, like they would have been terrified. They, would, they wouldn't have wrote, done a song with him or anything. Yeah. But they didn't, but they would have never get, gotten a chance. They would have never got to know him. Yeah. They would have never took that opportunity to realize he is an amazing human being. He's yeah. A, I mean, he, his story is. You listen to that guy give a an award speech or or yeah, whatever. I mean, like that to me, that's what an award. I mean, just thankful. Like if that, I would say it. And I wrote this song before. My dad would say, "If I don't light your fire, your wood's wet." I mean, like <laughs> if you can't look past all the all this all that stuff and realize there's just there's a pure heart there that loves what he does and loves sharing with people and is thankful to do it. And that's the way I am. Like I. I say, like, I'm, I get on the talkback mic all the time in our band. I go, dude, they're paying us to do this shit. Like, <laughs> for real? Like, look at all these people here. They pay yeah. us to do this. I do it for free. 
and we're getting paid to do it. Like, don't take that for granted. Yeah. It's, it's rare. And, and especially when, you know, like you said, or getting a cut, like, don't take that for granted. Cause there's a bunch of people here that are like, I'd, I'd give 10 years off my life to, to, to be right where you are right now. Yeah. And as much as I'm frustrated, cause I, I, I don't, I'd hate, I don't want to end my career with never having a song in the top 40. I've sold over five million records. I mean, like, that's cool. And I've written, I mean, like, I've, I've done a lot of stuff. Yeah. But, like, that's just something that's important to me because it kind of validates you. Because in a lot of ways, I still in this town, like, as much as I'm in, I'm still almost, I'm still a little bit on the outside. Oh, yeah. I always, I'm like, I've never. I feel that. I've never been on an award show. I've never performed, like. I'm telling CMT all of them, you, you're making a mistake. You should have me hosted. I'm fucking funny. <laughs> like I'm clever and I'm I'm quick off the top. And I'm like, and I can get away with stuff that some that some people couldn't get away with with yeah. jokes because of relationships. I'm like, but I've never got to do any of that. I'd, I'd love to. And yeah. I got when a fan asks you, why won't you let them play you on the radio? I'm like, that's hard. And I still have promoters. It affects me. Yeah. The people go, well, it, you know, they go, well, you don't need it. You still you should go out and sell. You got these sold out shows. I, I met last week. I huh? sell three, four thousand tickets. Yeah. I'm like, yep, yeah, but there's still promoters that go, yeah, but you know, Colt, you're not on the radio, so I can't pay you. And I'm like, well, you're talking about selling tickets, right? Not, and so yeah. I still have that. So yeah, that's frustrates me a little bit. I'd like to go, don't say I'm not on the radio. That's I right. got a damn song on, <laughs> you know, it's like, I tell all of them, I'm like, I'd have a party for a 20. Like, I'd throw a number one party for a 20. Yeah. But, you know, Always, and uh, if it happens, I'm trying to get come to grip, come to terms with it because I'm also looking at like where I'm at. And, you know, I told somebody the other day, I, 10 years ago, I'd go at, at 54, I should, I'd probably be about done or probably starting to wind down. But now I still believe you could still jump off now, just the way the state of the music business, like yeah. a song could jump off on TikTok or whatever. Like, so I still try to I believe still, that. Yeah, you still got that. Fire. I don't want to lose that dreamer side of it that I that I that I still kind of go into it with every day. Like yeah. I just love this shit. Like I just it's, it's awesome. Beautiful. It's awesome to be able to do. Well, uh, all right, last question before we get out of here. Cause you you are uniquely qualified to answer <laughs> this one. What what is the greatest golf course in the world? Oh, that's a little bit like asking the greatest song. Mm -hmm. You're talking very subjective. Well, to you. And again, it'd be hard for me to say too. Like I, I, I've because I've played just about all of them. Yep. I mean, but you go, how do you? I mean, I've played Augusta a lot. And how, how does it get better than that? I've played Pine Valley, been number one for a lot. I've played Bevel Beach a lot. I've played Saint. You know, I've, so they're all different for different reasons to me. I mean, and yeah. same songs. I mean, like you know, you you know, I mean. It, it, there's there's just so many variables to me that make something great. Yeah. Or what you know, I've had as much fun playing for th in a for three hundred people in a bar as I have playing, you know, We Fest and seventy five thousand people in front of it. You know, I mean, like I, I just love it. If, if you see me play, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, and I've played, I've still play multiple size venues. Like it's the same. Like yeah. it doesn't matter if you see if you see me. So I'm opening for Toby or Jason, or whatever. Same show you see me at 300 people. Man. It doesn't make any difference. I just, and I think as an artist, and I'll say that something to tell young artists, I pour every single bit of it out there, every time, Beautiful. every single night. I've played with kidney stones. I've played with all these health things I've been dealing with the last couple of years. I've missed one show in my life for sickness, and it was the fifth night in a row in Vegas at the NFR, and I went and I went. And nothing came out, and there was yeah. nothing I could do about it. <laughs> but like I played throwing up in between songs. I like I, you owe the fans everything you got when you get up there, because yeah. it's a gift to be able to do it, and somebody pay you to do it. Like I just the moment that I don't see it that way, and I've got into it with, to be honest with some, I've seen some artists like mail it in, go through the motions. Like I should have called a fight with me, like you especially like when if I know what some of them are making. <laughs> like I've got, I got into it with a big artist friend of mine one time, and it was I like I almost thought we were gonna like come to blows. I thought we was about to, like, and I was like, oh shit, we can do that too. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't care. I ain't worried about it. Like whatever you want to do, I mean, we can do whatever you want to do. But like, I, I, I'm one of my favorite sayings is I tell them all like, I don't want no problems, but if you want a problem, I say 
no problem. <laughs> but I, I like give it everything you got. Don't take that money and mail it in, bro. I love never, it. never. Writing, whatever. Write the best song you can write, whatever that is. Yeah. Perform it as hard, go as hard as you can go. And I, I just, I, I just don't know how to do it any other way. And if if I ever can't do that, then I, then you won't see Colt Ford anymore. I'll, yeah. I'll go to the house then. But I, but I, I just don't ever see myself losing that passion for making music. I'm, I'm working with a lot of younger artists now, and I'm yeah, doing some production on some younger artists, and that's fun for me too. I've really been mentoring kid g a lot the young young yeah, kid yeah. And I, I, I love doing that i love sharing with them and i think i wish more artists would do that because everybody gets so caught up with being cool and yeah who they are it's like yeah that's awesome dude but you you just never know maybe you could, something you say could maybe make a difference to this kid or yeah whatever so like he calls me Papa, and that pisses me off. <laughs> but but technically, I have two kids older than he is, <clears throat> so that's kind of fair. But it's like, but he asks me everything, and I tell him everything. Yeah, I'm like, I'll tell if you listen, I'll tell you where the snakes and the sharks and them. And like, I know. I mean, and 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 that's some of the good people. I mean, like in great words of Hunter S. Thompson, there's pimps and thieves, and there's some bad things about it too. Like, yeah. so I try to tell him, like, dude, watch this and watch that, and I I stay on him, like. I think it's cool to do that. It's cool to be able to shed a little bit of that light for some yeah. of these young kids and whether it be writing a song. And again, there's some kids right now, a better songwriter than everybody sitting in this town, sitting in his basement somewhere or dreaming some shit up and it's way better than me or you or any of these people we've talked about. Like, yeah. And I, I hope I meet them. I hope I get to write with them. It's yeah. just fun to just to just to be a part of music. Is It's truly a blessing and a gift, and I yeah. just – I love being a part of it. I well, love I being can, a part of it. I can't believe I'm still getting to do it yeah. all these years later. Well, I can tell um, that you're, and that's my favorite thing about getting to talk to people like yourself is just I can tell you're 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 on fire for it, and you got you got passion and uh, conviction, and and that that shines through, and I think it's really it is um, and inspirational. Fuck yeah! I just want to keep doing this shit. Oh, and it's beautiful, man. Writing songs and. Getting to do cool podcasts like this. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. I appreciate brother. you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's it. That's the pod. See you later. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Ten Year Town. If you're still listening, you must have liked it. So we hope that you will leave us a rating or review on Apple or Spotify, or give us a subscription on uh, YouTube. It's all free. Don't cost you nothing. But uh, we appreciate you being here, and uh, thank you for supporting the Tenure Town community. See you next week.